Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us here on the Freedom Sisters podcast. We have an exciting month for you in store. We are definitely talking about all ways that we can help our sisters heal in their time of need, whether it's dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder or military sexual trauma, or just trying to rebuild that connection with camaraderie and sisterhood and community. We are so honored that we get to be sponsored by the greatest organization out of the great state of Texas called the Pink Berets. They are going to grace the mic every week this month in September of 2021 as both participants and women who are in the space of running that organization. So a really cool dynamic that we haven't done before on the podcast, we are talking with participants of a program as well as those running the program. And I'm real excited for you guys to hear all about it. So if you're not sure what the Pink Berets are, they are a multi- disciplinary program that has diverse therapeutic options for individuals to seek resources to help them overcome with PTSD, military sexual trauma, other invisible wounds, things of that nature. And it's really all about building confidence and building community in a way that is special and unique for women. So women who served, if you have not heard of the Pink Berets, well, here's your opportunity to learn more about them right here on the Freedom Sisters podcast. So we are starting this conversation with two amazing women. We have Kim who has participated in the organization and we have the one, the only Amber, and she is the communications director for the Pink Berets. So as we get into this conversation, if you have ever thought about how art or photography could help you heal and to give yourself space to breathe and your mind to rest as you're creating something beautiful, this is your podcast, man. We are going to talk about their art program and their photography program in great detail today. So stick around as we talk with Kim and with Amber. Welcome, I'm Carrie Cheater, and this is the Freedom Sisters Podcast, a show where my sisters in service talk about her life journey, from hardships to victories and everything in between. We are the leading media company to amplify women veterans. Hey, y'all. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Freedom Sisters podcast. I'm your host, Carrie, and I'm so excited for this whole series this month because one of my favorite organizations led by an incredible women veteran is sponsoring the podcast all month long, and that is the Pink Berets. And so we are getting a special treat week after week to talk to women who have sought their services and also women who work for the Pink Berets and provide those services. So it is really such an honor and a pleasure to share these stories with you. And as you're listening and you hear something that you are interested in, so many of the programs right now at the Pink Berets have gone virtual thanks to COVID. So if you are not in the San Antonio area, you can still potentially be seek out their services and be a part of them wherever you are across the world. So without further ado, we are gonna get into this conversation with Kim Guidry. And I'm so excited to talk with her because she's one of the four women we're talking to this month who have sought services with the Pink Berets. Kim, I probably still said your name wrong. <laughs> Guidry. Oh, yay! I was like, I saw your face. I was like, oh, maybe I didn't say it quite right still. So, so I did, okay, yay. <laughs> So if you could just please do us a favor and introduce yourself, whatever, wherever you, however you want to introduce yourself. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for having me. First off, I'm actually a 27 year Air Force veteran. I'm retired, retired in San Antonio, Texas. I've been all over the world and I have two boys that are raised in the military and I'm married to a retired military air force and just living life. I golf and play pickleball. And because of the pink berets, I'm now getting more into art. Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. <pretty> cool. <laughs> cool. Can you tell us a bit more about your time in service? what you do? Where'd you go? Do you have any deployments that you would like to share with us? Yeah. Well, I started out 
in financial management, and then I became a aerospace medicine technician, and then uh, a first sergeant, and then ended my career after 27 years with personnel HR special projects. But uh, I was in Europe, and then I went over to Korea and Japan and deployed a couple other times, the Middle East, came back, went to the Pentagon, had my kids in Kansas. <laughs> so I had a fantastic career. It's oh, that's great. That's great. It sounds like it. In Texas. <laughs> And you ended up in Texas. Well, hey, Texas ain't half bad. And I love how you were like, I play golf and pickleball. Pickleball is really, actually, fun fact, I think pickleball was created in Seattle, if I remember correctly. Uh, but a lot of people in the Midwest love playing pickleball. I'm addicted. <laughs> I have to do something else besides golf, so yeah. Nice. <laughs> Awesome. That's great. So why did you decide to reach out to the Pink Berets and what services have you used up there? Well, actually, after I retired, I personally sought out the Veterans Affairs counselors. And I still felt after retirement, I wasn't getting the proper treatment that I needed specifically for being a female veteran. My trauma came from Korea while I was stationed there, military sexual. So in the military, we're not allowed to really speak about what's going on with traumas, but we have to suppress our feelings. But this particular counselor told me to go see Dr. Abney from the Pink Berets. And I talked to her and she it, she cracked my nut, you know, my head, and it just went. And then my trauma was being treated. Because you can only treat symptoms, I guess, to a certain level. But then my trauma was actually treated. And I just felt like a whole person again with them. Because oh, they know how to, they know how to treat female veterans. It's, it, it, it was specific to me. It just felt, it just felt specific. So. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I love that. How you were like, they knew how to treat me and how it made you whole yes. again. I love yeah. that. Cause that's really what it's about. It's in my opinion, the healing journey is not that you become perfect or you become where you don't stumble, you don't have any hiccups along the way, but to feel whole and to find that feeling again. So if you do stumble, it's easier to right. find that once somebody has been able to penetrate that and, and make you whole again. Do you, would you agree to that? I agree 1000%. Yeah. Yes. So as a woman veteran seeking those services within the VA, do you still utilize the VA and would you, is it a good like marriage of the two or not at all? Yes. Well, if it wasn't for the VA itself, I would have never known about the pink. It is a process and you just had to get that right counselor, I guess, that knew about the pink berets. I didn't know anything about it. And so I, I'm just blessed that, that the Pink Berets reached out to the Veteran Affairs to collaborate on, on dealing with just female veteran issues. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah. So from the time, how many years have you been utilizing the Pink Beret services? I would say now about three years. Okay. And then how many years ago was your trauma? That was in 1992. Oh, wow. So almost, let's do the math here. 92 to now would be. I don't do math public <laughs> 30 years right yeah because 22 yeah. would be 30 years yeah. so 26 years later you're finally healing correct wow what 
knowing that and how long you had to suppress and, and mask, what advice would you give other women who are still suppressing or masking their trauma? Just have a belief in something, always be true to yourself, but you have to seek out resources. There's other female, there's a lot more out there than we think. I have to tell you the chaplain services always helped me in the military. If it wasn't for the chaplain services, I would have never been able to survive. So I'm very blessed that they were always there during deployments, there just to listen. That, that would be my first go-to because unfortunately you don't know who you can trust in the military without them making you feel that you're, you are a victim or you're the problem. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with you on that. As, as a person of faith, I have to agree with you on that for multiple reasons, but even before I was fully like bought into my faith, if you will, the chaplains did feel like a neutral ground. It just felt like yes. a safe place that you could just go to just to kind of, even if it was just to regain your footing or just to find that pause. Cause when you were there, nobody like, even at basic training, if we go back as far as that, where was the only place you could have a break from the off tempo was going to chapel. So even chapel. if you weren't a believer, people were going to chapel because yeah. it was just a moment to rest your mind, to breathe Absolutely. and not be scolded. So I, I think there was some continuity with that over my time in service that I just always knew like, hey, that would be a place just to pause. So yes. what have you noticed about yourself pre the pink berets to post pink berets activities? I've become sort of lighter inside. I don't take things as everybody's out to get me or somebody's staring or always trying to, you know, get with me or something. My relationships are a lot better. I'm more at peace. I'm definitely more at peace. It's awesome. Besides discussing your life and your healing journey with Dr. Abby, are you doing any other of the activities that the Pink Berets offer? Well, I, I did a couple of painting sessions. Dr. Abney is an eloquent painter and I love looking at her work. And so we get to share each other's work back and forth. And I say, hey, what about this? And uh, so I get some advice from her and I started painting only, well, actually about four years ago at a church retreat. And it actually calmed me down enough for three hours for my PTSD because I started it after my last deployment and uh, it was, it was fruitful. It was, it was just a peaceful spiritual moment for me. And so I just went and bought paint canvases, didn't know what medium I wanted. And I just started painting and it was fun. So it, it does heal me. Oh, that's awesome. I work, I do a lot of work currently with Corporal Teu and she is an artist. And that is one of the things that she was like at the very beginning of after she was released from the brig was like, let's do art. Here's my art. I need art supplies. And so. Yeah. Because it's, there's something about being involved in the creative process is like, you have to be all in. Like yes. if I am distracted at all when I'm writing or when I am creating some kind of content to, to push out to the world, it is no good. I have to be all focused. Every other task has to be out of the way so I can have my undivided attention into that creative process. Right. And and it is, it is just this like calming plus at the end of it, you like see the beauty that is inside of you coming out, right? It's actually being created by your hands and this was inside of you. So I think there's like a double, I wouldn't say double-edged sword, but there's like a double reward because it's like something that you vision and then something that was in you that now you could share with others. Correct. I didn't know I had it in me. <laughs> 
<laughs> you do. You do. Definitely. Especially your four years, you probably got some really amazing stuff now. And if you want to share later, you can send us some images and we can throw them into this conversation so people can see if you want to share your art. I would love that. Yeah, that would be nice. Thank you. Yeah. What advice would you give women who are like, Ooh, it's a pink beret is right for me. What would you tell her and encourage her to just give it a try? The pink berets are for you. It's for every female veteran that has worn the uniform. I mean, they totally take care of you. You know, the military is still a man's world. I'm sorry. You, you have to, you have to be that female and they know how to treat the females veterans. I just love them. They, they're, they all have a story. And I think that all of us need to write our story. We need to write our stories and collaborate. And when you talk to others that have been through what you've been through, it's like, wow, I'm not in the same boat. And you really aren't. And there's a lot of stories that need to come out that still haven't been spoken. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be some kind of platform where as active duty veterans or while we're serving, where there's a platform they can go to tell their story without any repercussions. Yeah. I truly believe that. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully we get there. Like I just keep saying, pressing on and encouraging, you know, women to oh, stand up, to serve and to, to not take any crap. There are so many of us that are very strong and do support and, and are here for you. And so anyone who is serving that feels alone, you're never alone. You've got us. You can reach out to pink berets. You can reach out to freedom system. And we'd be happy to guide you through getting your, sharing your story or even getting it out to somebody who you just need somebody to listen. To um, listen. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. I love the camaraderie. There is something so electrifying being in a room full of women who served. I've been to a few events that, I say few, I've been to quite a few events where it's just incredibly empowering and you just look around the room and you're like wow this is what it's about that's camaraderie this collaboration like supporting one another like we are i think taught so much in uniform that we are each other's competition and we get pit against one another in in uniform right. so often right. that it is not like that at all it should not be like that at all and when it is like that in our space it's like okay ladies we need to like sit down and remember who we are for. We are all for one another. Oh, and I think the Pink Berets does that so, so well. Yes, I agree. Awesome. So how has the Pink Berets helped you live life full out? Well, I have a huge faith base to begin with. Truthfully, I don't do a lot of activities with them. I have done the art, but I do still talk to Dr. Abney on the side just to show my paintings and just to know she's there or someone's there to listen if I have. I, I just feel so blessed right now that I feel so at peace. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't reached out to them as a need. Now I'm trying to focus on what can I do to help the pink berets. So my husband and I own a golf business. So we're, we're doing a golf tournament on veterans day in San Antonio to support the pink berets and a hundred percent of the net proceeds are going to go to them because uh -huh. they have helped me. I mean, I want, I want to be able to help others and to carry their message forward for many, many years. That's awesome. So people who are in the San Antonio area or nationwide who want to either sponsor or show up to the event, how can they connect with you? Actually, they can go to gobiggolf.com. 
Cool. Uh, that's our website. And we have the pink berets on there. We have the sponsorships and we'll have the signups to play. It's a huge event and it's on Veterans Day, November 11th. Oh, I love that so much. So yeah. because the both of us have talked about our faith kind of vaguely, is there, can I ask a couple of questions about that? Are you okay with that? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Is there like a go-to verse that's in your heart or your mind all the time when you feel either where you're spiraling or you're overwhelmed and you're seeking that piece, that's kind of your go-to Bible verse? I wish I had one. I'm not, yeah. I'm not adverse to the Bible. I'm more spiritual. My guidance is more by eloquent quotes by people. Quotes. Mm -hmm. And... I'm, I'm writing a book, so it helps me to just, you know, allow my, continue my journey. And sure. it, it's, it's never ending. It's always in the back of your mind, but I'm a victor, not a victim. That's mm -hmm. what I try to tell these women. You're just, you're not a victim because somebody loves you. Oh yeah. I loved, but my dad taught me to be very spiritual. And uh, I have a very big heart when it comes to God. I'm just, yeah. He's number one. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. Yeah. No, Truth. I hear you, sister. hundred, hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that those are like, there's a lot of people who struggle with their faith because of trauma. How did you have, how did you reconcile that with the overarching, like God is for us? And how did you reconcile that in your own story? Well, because God's not a punishing God. And I believed that he wanted me to be there at that time. He wanted me to experience this, even though it was bad. But it, it, it gave me so much faith and said, you know what? I have words now of wisdom. I have a story that I can get out to other women and tell that story to maybe help somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel now I have an outlet. It's, I'm a survivor and he gave, he's giving me the voice. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. That's awesome. Well, it is such a joy sitting down with women like you who have gone through the process of healing, who are now outwardly expressing their healing to help others and bring them along the path so that they can feel whole again as well. And, you know, 27 years in the United States Air Force is a job well done. So thank you so much for your faithful service thank to you. this country in spite of the hardships that you experienced and Thank you for taking care of yourself and others and, and leading the way so others can follow you. It's really, it, you. it's really incredible. It means a lot. Thank you. The Freedom Sisters podcast is proudly brought to you by the Pink Berets, who have partnered with Bill House Arts Forward Arts Program, an opportunity for veterans to express their emotions through the soothing and therapeutic process of painting through arts immersion. As a part of this art class series, this program is a non-intrusive and innovative approach to healing, which allows participants to learn how to draw and paint from a professional art instructor. Research has showed improved self-awareness, relaxation, altered perspectives of others and the environment, a sense of calm and peace, and a sense of belonging. To inquire about this program, go to www.thepinkberets.org today and find out more. Well, hello. We are going to continue this conversation with another member of the Pink Berets, and I'm so excited. You all have heard from her before. Go back to number episode number 84, and we talked to Miss Amber Davila. Uh, Davila. I, I knew I was going to say that wrong in my head. I had it right. And her mom, Tanya, back in May when we talked to mother-daughter duos. And I'm really excited to have her back on this show 
to talk to you guys more about the pink berets. So we're going to get Amber up here and going so we can have more of an amazing conversation about this incredible organization, the pink berets. Hi. Hi. Welcome back, my friend. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me back again. Oh my gosh, I was so excited to see that you were going to be one of the women we were talking to about the Pink Berets. I mean, I think it's probably very fitting because of what you do with them. But anyway, I was really excited that you were on the list. So can you just give us a quick little who you are? Like you're a veteran, you're an Army veteran. So where you served, when you served, wh where you went? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, I'm an Army veteran. I served 2011 to 2015. And I was stationed in Korea and at Camp Stanley, and I was stationed at Fort Carson, Colorado. Nice. Well done. And now you have landed yourself in Texas. Were you a Texas native to begin with or no? I was. When I got out, I had an almost two-year-old daughter and I was a single mom. And my mom, as, we, as you mentioned before, who I, we spoke with in May, and said, come home, I'll get to know my granddaughter and I'll help you get back on your feet and get back in the civilian world. And so I returned home. <laughs> Yay. Yes. I love it. I love it so much. So we're talking about this incredible organization, the Pink Berets. Can you tell us like what the mission of the Pink Berets is and why you're so passionate about it? Yes. Yeah, so the, the Pink Berets exist to support, advocate for, educate, and, and all around help find a way to heal for women veterans, active duty military as well, and first responders. So your military, I mean, your fire, your police, um, your EMS, and including your emergency room staff. All of those people who experience trauma or potentially experience trauma on a regular basis. And we're here to support them with those invisible injuries, your PTSD, combat trauma, stress, military sexual trauma, and help them heal so that they can move on to be the authentic selves that they were meant to be. Mm, I love that. And you guys focus, obviously, with the name Pink, you focus on women. Can you tell me why Stephanie or why the organization decided to focus more on the women demographic of the veteran community, including those first responders you had mentioned? Absolutely. You know, it is a male-dominated field. And that's you know, undisputed. It is a male dominated field. And Stephanie, when she got out and she'd seen what she had seen and she'd experienced what she experienced and sought to find somewhere that she could lead people or somewhere where she could find her own healing. And uh, there was nothing out there for women. And myself, my own experiences, when I got out and I started seeking assistance for my own struggles, I found that I was often lumped in with male soldiers. And, you know, you sit in that room and, and you'll get the, the eye rolls and the, yeah, or you get the commentary. And so it, it makes it difficult for you to actually open up and really find healing mm -hmm. uh, because of that. And then that goes with your um, first responders as well. You know, the majority of your police officers, the majority of firefighters, they're all male. And so finding a place where you fit, feel like you fit in and you're with the people that you feel comfortable with and that you know have walked your shoes or walked your boots, right? And so that you can open up because you feel like that's your space, that's your safe space. They they know what you've been through. It, it can be difficult to find that. And she said, you know what? If I can't find it, I'll make it. <laughs> so we created that space and uh, you know, I the number of times that I've heard Myself included, the words came out of my mouth. And when I heard them again after me with other participants, you know, I finally feel like I fit in. When it comes to, um, I, you know, I can only speak to my own experiences for military, but I'm, I'm sure it feels the same way or similar with other first responders. But, you know, you, you don't necessarily fit in in the military. We always feel like we're trying to fit into a male dominated field. We have to walk the walk. We have to talk the talk. We always have to be tougher. As my drill sergeant said, you're always going to have to be faster, be stronger, be smarter. You're always going to be proving yourself the whole way through because they're going to be looking at you to make a mistake. They're going to be looking at you to be the reason women shouldn't be there. So you assimilate into this male dominated field and then you get out and you don't really fit in with women's civilians anymore either. 
so finding that space, the truth. Oh my heaven. <laughs> finding that space where people really understand you. Um, and you know, you I've had so many people say when they walk across the steps of the pink berets, you finally feel like you belong. You finally feel like these people get and it's such such a huge moment to finally feel like you fit in somewhere. Just this past or weekend before last, we had our our annual Women Warriors on Water Fishing Retreat. And one of our attendees came and she said, you know, I went back and forth all, all week. I wasn't going to go. I was, I was going. I wasn't going to go. I was going. And um, she said at the last minute, I decided to come. And she said, I, I am so grateful that I did. Because for the first time in years, I feel like people understand me. Mm. And that's exactly why we continue to do what we do. And we continue to advocate and educate others and support our women veterans and first responders because that that moment right there, I finally feel like I belong. Yeah, I, Ooh, that gave me... I fit in. Yes. Yeah, that gave me some. When you do feel yeah. like you fit in, you can start to open up and and you can start to genuinely heal. Oh yeah, because you are able to let that guard down and let people in. That you've been up for so long. So you had mentioned in in your last answer that you were a participant first. So how did you find the Pink Berets, and what program did was your like gateway into this incredible organization? I believe in fate, because I found the Pink Berets purely by fate. I was actually after I got out, I was going to school, and I wanted to find a way to give back to my community. Well, because just going to school didn't feel like I was doing enough. I started working with another nonprofit organization that supported women with um, ovarian cancer. Uh, and as I was doing that, I was invited to participate in an event um, that celebrated women who were giving back in their community. And I met the Pink Berets there that night. And I instantly like, it was almost like, you know, like a dog whose ears perked up. I was like, what? <laughs> what is this? There's something for me? And so I, you know, I researched and I, you know, got on and followed them on social and and then you know, I started sharing it initially, and then I came on board with their equine program. And I think the thing that appealed to me the most was I never felt comfortable really talking about anything while I was sitting in a box, right? Sitting inside that clinical office with the umpteenth doctor that the VA or the military had given me because they always change. <laughs> So I never found that <laughs> that that person that I could really open up to and 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 really start to discuss what what I what I had been through and what I was going through, and so to randomly find this organization that took it outside of the office, right? They found different ways for you to find that peace and find that healing. And when I say that horses make you feel those emotions. You have to, they, they react to your emotions. And so you have to be in touch with yourself so that you can be in touch with that. And it makes you stop and really look in. And once I discovered what I was feeling, once I really opened that up and started to discover myself again, and, and I don't know if you know this, but horses can't talk. So, <laughs> so they. You know, you can tell them your secrets and you can really open up to the horse and, and the horses don't judge you either. So being out um, with the horses and, and finding that peace, that was the moment for me. That was where I started to heal. Yeah. All my life. Not tell everyone. <laughs> All my life. I thought horses talked because of Mr. Ed. Like, <laughs> could you remember that show? Well, so yeah. It's easy. But so I know horses are incredible and you're right. Like, if we go out with any kind of nervousness, we have horses. They they pick it up, they sense it, they kind of like, like what's going on with you? And they'll nudge you and they'll like, so you have to kind of like drop those, you have to drop your guard. You have to be one with the horse as cheesy as that sounds, but that's yeah. really how it is. They, they're they very intelligent and they're very emotionally intelligent animals. Yes. So. And the best part is they all have their own personality. So just like you would with, you know, friends, you, you don't just go out and pick a horse and that's your horse. 
my horse with the pink race picked me. And so Slick, who is my absolute favorite, <laughs> he's a little sassy, he's got a little attitude, he picks on you, he messes with you. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> Awesome. And he did. He kind of draw. He drew out that in me, so I was able to like let go and relax. And and he can always tell, you know, when I'm in a bad mood because he goes from you know being sassy to being nuzzly. He's a good horse. He's a good horse. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that so much. So, how did you make the switch from being a participant to being an active member of the staff at Pink Boys? You know, it happened naturally because of what I do. I work in public relations and and I just was automatically, just because I was so excited about what the Pink Berets did and what, who they are and what they do. And I just kept pushing it out and pushing it out. And then, you know, naturally it was just like, I want to help more. I want to help more. I need to do more. So I came on and I started helping them. And it started, you know, just little things like, you know, pushing it out to the people I knew and pushing it out to the media. Uh, and then it turned into me helping them with some social media. I did have to take a break for a while because of what I do, I, I did, I was working in other nonprofits and it made it difficult to not have a conflict of interest. So I did step back for a little while to make sure that I was giving my job who was paying me the most attention that I could. But when I decided to move on and open my own company, I came right back to the pink race, knocking on the door. Hey, hey, I'm back. Yeah. What, do I, what, do I want to do? Like, what, what you got room for? And then I, you know, so beyond social media management, I stepped in as their um, director of communications. And so I handle all things PR and communications for the pink race now. That's awesome. What has been your favorite story or campaign that you have run with the pink race? Oh, that's a tough one because I love them all for different reasons. I know when I came back, you know, we started working on the Vanessa Guillen campaign. And to be a part of that was, was a huge moment for me because I've been advocating for legislative change for a long time, but it actually gave me the opportunity to put my money where my mouth was. And I wasn't just saying, we need to be better, we need to be better. I actually went to DC with Stephanie and stood in front of the Capitol and we demanded change. And it's been a slow process, but it's the most action we've seen in decades when it comes to this. And so I loved being a part of that and all of the other amazing women who were part of that. It wasn't just the Pink Berets, it was so many other organizations and, and amazing women veterans who were a part of that, including men veterans. Men were also involved and, and that's what we need, right? We need everybody to be involved and speak up. The, the L'Oreal campaign, sharing, the, sharing with the, the world, the woman of worth that Stephanie is, because she's the last person to say, hey, look what I did. So to be able to say, look what she's doing. An excellent campaign to be a part of but just bringing attention. Any of the campaigns we work on, we're bringing attention to the problem. We're bringing attention to the women and we're also reaching more women. Um, the, the more we put out and the more we work, the more women come to our door. And the, the more we realize, you know, we can't be everywhere yet, but we're working on it. And so, you know, especially with COVID, you know, going virtual, we realized how many people nationally and internationally needed us and to be able to be there for them as well and support them, even when we can't be in person is, was big for me. It was huge for me. Yeah. I'm actually considering, I need to, I want to do the virtual art class, which is oh, Mondays, yes. I think. So I'm looking forward to that. I found out, I discovered the Pink Berets because of the Vanessa Guillen protests and things of that nature and started the relationship there doing online protests and productions. Get like the Sisters Keepers and Invisible Combat up and running and helping them as well get out their protests and stuff of that nature. So that's where I discovered y'all. And, you know, I'm way up here in Washington State, so eons away from Texas at this point, you know, geographically and just was impressed and loved the nature and the mission of what you are doing. It's just really, really incredible. So 
I'm glad to keep the conversation going and 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 supporting y'all in what you're doing. It's just really remarkable. Is there anything that if somebody is listening today and they're having that hard time breaking through of connecting or finding an organization that will help them heal authentically, what would you say to that woman veteran, that first responder who is who is struggling through that today? The first step is always the hardest. And everybody says that, but the first step is always the hardest. Walking into the unknown, particularly when we've done it so many times and been left wanting, is tough. But on the other side of that first step are women just like you, who have walked in your boots, they know your journey. And if you're not ready to come in person, we do offer our virtual and we have our, our virtual, like, you know, our virtual art class, which is, I mean, our, the artist that assists us with that and facilitates that is amazing. And I have heard nothing but wonderful things from the participants coming out of the art class. I tried to do it once. I am not an artist. <laughs> well, the gal we spoke to earlier on this episode, Miss Kim, mm -hmm. she has shared some of the art and how it has revealed this whole other side to her because of that program. So we'll be sharing her art as well when we when we release this episode so it's yeah, really yeah. really amazing what they do and and we have for local and you know as we expand and we begin to open other chapters we'll have more stuff locally and in, in different areas but you know just that first connection if you're not ready do it virtually you know we have our combat ptsd support group on tuesdays which is virtual with dr acne and we have our MST support group on Thursdays with Dr. Abney, both of which are virtual, both of which are Zoom. You can turn your camera on, you can leave it off, you can participate, you can sit and listen. It is confidential. And she is always there to facilitate. And so if you're maybe wanting to test the waters, I would say start there, start virtually. But I also hope that, you know, everyone knows that we're, we're here. We are in South Texas. We have an advocate, um, an ambassador in Wyoming now who is starting to make those connections locally. And she's telling us that, you know, there, there is nothing for women veterans out there. There's the VFW. She went to the VFW and asked like, Hey, what do you have for women veterans? And they were like, we don't have any. She was like, I'm sure you do. <laughs> so <laughs> she's yeah. like, that'll change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have some in our little tiny town to include myself at the VFW, but there's, there is there are not many, but they are there. Yes. Yes. So, you know, starting to reach those women veterans everywhere, right? We're starting to find ways to reach them everywhere, working to continue our virtual program so that it is available, even if we're not in your area. And then over the next few years, we hope to start really expanding so that we are local as, you know, where possible. Because we do have a virtual art program on Mondays, but in person, you know, at, at our retreat, our last retreat, we had um, Amanda Allen from Bead Pricks come in and she, you know, held a, a bracelet making class. We did try that one virtual. It was a little bit tougher because she wasn't in person to help people, but we are hoping to adjust that so we can offer another virtual option for our bracelet class. And then, you know, we have our uh, photography art classes once a month. That's where I step in. I also help with that facilitate. I do enjoy that because that's one of the ways that I found healing. I can't draw, I can't paint, but I can take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> and I find that with photography, similar to other art programs, similar to the painting and the drawing is that you can take that emotion and you can put it down on paper, on a photograph and capture it there and you can leave it and walk away. You can take what you're feeling, put it there, acknowledge it. And then it gives you the opportunity to say, okay, now I can move forward. And even if it's little steps, right? Moving from angry to um, sad, moving from, you know, confused to understanding each step, each step you take. And that's the beauty of the pink berets is that we're always finding new ways to help women find healing outside of the clinical office. We do offer clinical as well because it does help and it should go hand in hand with that. But a lot of us like myself, that's not where I'm going to find complete healing. It's going to be finding that peace 
outside of the outside of the office and connecting myself, reconnecting myself to the world around me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just I came across your, well, I follow you. Photo <laughs> line, like I love what you guys are doing. So I follow you. I look at your stuff all the time, but the photo class that you just did this last week with the red flowers and the dark shadowing, like so incredibly powerful. That was a really great picture. So whoever took that, if it was you, kudos. It was a really amazing picture. It wasn't me. But it was a budding photographer and I am so excited for her. just, and you know, that's another thing too, finding healing and finding an acts of service, right? So finding a way for me to share my skills with someone else, with another woman veteran, whether that be, you know, helping them find healing or helping them find a new skill that they can use in their life, a new purpose. That's what I love about the pink berets, you know, yeah. and to be able to take something that I'm good at and share that with other people to build. And she is, I'm telling you, raw talent. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Raw this talent. is beautiful. Yeah. Well, pass on my like affirmation of that because that was a beautiful striking, very yeah. uh, thought provoking, emotional provoking photo. It was really great. And just with shadowing and highlighting and the, that pop of color right there. Whew, it was good. Yeah. It was really nice. And that's um, what I love about the photography class is that each each time I give them a little taste of like some basics of photography skills, but also we tie it into how to, you know, convey those emotions. So it's kind of a peer support healing group. That's cool. Real cool. Well, I have been talking about that photography class with one of our clients and I'm hoping that she takes it. So we'll see. We'll see what yeah. goes but it is always such a joy talking to you. It's just a delight to sit down and hear um, and see your face and just the, this, the pure light and joy that you get from doing this tough but needed work and how you're just so passionate about it. So stay in it, keep doing it. Um, I'm so glad you're here for our sisters and thank you so much for your time and continue to support of us too over here at Freedom yes, Sisters. Absolutely, and thank you for the same way about you. I look forward to one day when we can all travel safely again to meeting you in person <laughs> because I feel the same way about you. Every time we have a conversation, we just get, I just get so fired up about helping women and just to see that you're advocating and empowering them and, and sharing with the world, you know, not only what we do, but all women veterans and giving them a platform to share their stories and their journeys. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Well, we'll be in touch. You know, this is not the end of our conversation. Yes. <laughs> For everyone else that's listening, you know, keep sharing your stories because they matter. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Rate and review this podcast and share with your friends. Until next time, be seen, be heard, be known. Amplify Women Veterans.